four-point geometry we've visited, and four-point theorem of rotations. And how I guess we're gonna, for those of us who haven't read this with us before, the way we're gonna read it is we're gonna read it and try to figure this stuff out ourselves, yeah, as opposed to just read the answers directly. And I think there's some other things that we should check as it relates to other material that's been introduced. Okay, so for example, it says rotations, another kind of transformation that preserves distance is a rotation, okay? So I guess it's kind of obvious what a rotation is in that sense, and obviously it preserves distance. So it's an isometry, right? According to the language of the book, it's already introduced. Here the entire plane is turned about some point through a given angle. Thus the size and shape of any figure is kept invariant, but its points all move along arcs of concentric surface. The center, which may or may not belong to the figure, being rotated, is the only point that remains fixed. Okay? So the center of rotation is the only fixed point, yeah? So one thing you might want to check is Okay, maybe this is a good question, but the rotation, remember in the, in the introduction, we talked about groups, right? The rotation from a group. Okay. Maybe you want to think about that. Group again. Yeah, so it has an identity. So I guess the identity function is a rotation, right? It's maybe the rotation about no angle, but then in this case, it's not satisfying the only fixed point is center, yeah? yeah? So we can consider that to be a trivial rotation where, that, where there's an exception to that rule. And then every rotation about a fixed point, you can unrotate it about that point, yeah. okay? So that makes you wonder okay, well, if the center of rotations don't have to be the same, they still form a group. Yeah. Still do, yeah? yeah. And still unrotate them. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but but two rotations performed successively might may 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 or may not be a rotation. Yeah. Okay, but it doesn't prevent it from forming a group, right? <coughs> um yeah, we'll see about what happens with rotations combined with rotations, yeah? I think, I hope, if we don't, we'll just start thinking about it on our own, okay? Okay, so as an example of the use of rotation, let's consider figure ABC. So this is their diagram. So we've got figure ABC. Okay, and then you have equilateral triangles on each of the sides, yeah? So the answer to that is yes. Yeah, so these are all equilateral triangles. Okay. And then I'm going to join. So let's call this A, B, C. So this is their diagram as well, yeah? B, uh, and we're going to join B, Q, and R, C. Yep, we call this point F. Okay. So it says, as an example of a rotation, so these are all equilateral kinds, of, yeah, except for the middle one. Yeah, so as an example of rotation, we rotate through 60 degrees about A, okay? So notice this is 60 degrees, yeah, yeah? So if we rotate 60 degrees about A, anti-clockwise, yeah? That determines the whole transformation, okay? And the claim is, if you do that, 
you rotate triangle ARC into triangle ABQ. Yeah? Because, so this, that's 60. This is like that. Yeah, so when you rotate here, right, that angle is the same. So when you rotate 60, AR turns into AB, right? And then, um, and then AC turns into AQ, yeah? yeah? And the equilaterals are the same anyway. And the angle is the same, yeah? So then, in particular, it says BQ is equal to RC, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think by a similar argument, this is also equal to AP, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I admitted the line AP from the diagram because it's a bit distracting. <coughs> so AP equals BQ equals CR, it says in this. And angle RFB equals 60 degrees. So it claims that RFB is 60 degrees. Is that obvious? Yeah, I see the sun before. You see it any other way? So basically, I yeah, I think I see it the same way you do. That they don't explain. Do they say it at all? Why? I don't think they say why. So this angle here, right, rotates to this angle here, right, and so that is a bow tie here. So then these are equal on the same cyclic quad. Is there any other, any other way to see that? So I guess the thing is it's not rotating about F, right? It's rotating about A. So it's not just obviously that it's going 60, yeah? Maybe. Yeah, I guess we haven't shown that there is collinear yet. But I guess once you know that that's 60, you know, you have three separate quads, yeah? Yeah, I don't know. You see another way to see why it's 60? Okay, moreover, since RFB equals angle 60, RAB equals angle 60, RAB equals angle 60, and CFQ equals angle 60, and CAQ equals angle 60. CFQ, that's just a vertically opposite. And CAQ is angle 60. Yeah, why is it 60, huh? For some obvious reason. I'm pretty sure it's just the angle to the angle. The bow tie thing? Yeah, well, you can think about it as like when you do something with the angle. Mm. So, like, so it's still going to be good for the angle. Alright, let's move on then. The quadrangle is ARBF. 
CQAF or cyclic, that's what we said, right? Since BFC is 120 degrees, this is 120 degrees, either side, yeah? BPCF is a third cyclic quad, but we said that too, right? Therefore, the circumcircles of the three triangles, BTC, CQA, and ARB, all pass through point F. Oh, okay. Yeah? This is called the Fermat point. Okay, that's the Fermat point. But it's only defined so far as BQ and CI intersection, right? We now see it must also lie on AP. Now, why does it must also lie on AP? I think I understand what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so basically, because, because the intersection point of all three circles is a fixed point, right? Yeah? yeah? We showed that F was the intersection of these two lines is equal to that intersection, yeah? Yeah? So therefore, the intersection of any two is equal to that intersection. Yeah? yeah? So therefore, the intersection of BQ and AP also lies on the point of intersection of all three circles, yeah? Which we knew was F. Right? Yeah. Okay, so well, it's good that we can figure it out. They're not really explaining it, but that's I think that's more enjoyable in some ways, huh? In Euclid's proof of Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, so this is a new diagram required. Okay, so we're good with that. Yeah? Yeah. Alright, so that's pretty cool. It's a little bit of an appetizer, I guess. So let me just draw the diagram again. We have some squares. This is the right triangle. This is C, A, B, C, yeah. Squares. Square integrity. Okay. So the center of the squares are yeah. O, they're called O. Okay. After drawing the lines A, R, B, J, C, D, C, E. A, I, B, J. 
Okay, so these are lines connecting the squares to the vertices of the triangle, yeah? And that's like this. So that's I. A, I, B, J. Oh, B, K, B, B, J, is that the other one, yeah? Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. And C, so what should it be? It's the one that's on the right, that one's on the left. Huh? Eh? It's nine. Oh, no. What should it be? Just C. No, it's C. It's C, B, and C. So it's connected to both. Oh. To take away our choices, we connect them to both. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. This is D and E, yeah? Interesting. Okay, so what's the claim? We observe that a rotation about A, <coughs> again, it's A, huh? 90 degree rotation. Oh. Yeah. This is some kind of congruence switch. Alright, so. Which two triangles? It's, so this line now goes down here, right? This one is no goes here. So it's A D C and A B J, right? So A B C goes to A B J. A B J, yeah? Is that what they say too? Yes. Therefore, BJ equals DC, yes. BJ equals DC. Yeah. And also, AI equals CE. AI equals CE. Yeah. Since we're doing it on the other one? Yeah. Yes. AI equals CE, yeah? Yeah. Excellent. Oh, not only are they equal, they're perpendicular. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, actually, it's, it's a proof of Pythagoras. We can try to change the proof of more. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'll we'll continue. Okay, then they say the similar triangles BCX and BKJ. <coughs> B, C, oh, where's X? Oh. BJ and CA, I think. Where's X? Is this X? Where's Y? Y is here. So similar triangles BCX, BKJ. BCX. BCX and BKJ. Where's K? K is 
<coughs> at the top. <coughs> PCX P K K. Yeah, so they're right angle triangles with the same angle, yeah? Right? So they're the same angle here. Mm -hmm. And they're parallel lines, yeah? The J is that one here, yeah? Okay, so they're similar. CAY is similar to GAI. C A Y. Oh, it's G A I. Is that G then? <coughs> okay, good. Yeah. Mm hmm. So what happens if they're similar? You get CX on B. So we labeled the the op, this side this length B, yeah, I think. This is the the normal triangle length. Oh I think it's Yeah. Okay, so CX on B. CX on B, yeah, B is the same as the length of the square. Is equal to CX on AJ is equal to A on A plus B. Maybe let's just jump straight to the chase. So CX on B is equal to A on A plus B. <coughs> Yeah? It's because this is A and that's A plus B, right? Okay. CY on A equals B on A plus B. Yeah, we don't need to read the working out. Yeah, CY is um, this length on A, right? Yeah. Is equal to B on B plus A. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so this is A and this is B. And then C and C plus B right. Oh. Ah, good observation. <coughs> See, we don't really need to keep reading. So CX is equal to CY, yeah? Okay, so that's what does that show? CX is equal to CY. That's the end, by the way. So I always they do like the only one. Did we talk about CX and CY before? What was the point of this, do you remember? What is the point of this? In your book, it doesn't have anything further, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe this isn't talking about a proof of Pythagoras. It's maybe saying inside the proof of Pythagoras. 
there is some interesting result. Yeah. So these links are equal, huh? So if you drew a line from C to the intersection, right? Mm -hmm. The ratio of the PR, yeah, will be equal to the ratio of this, yeah. wouldn't it? Because then that would cancel with that when you do the seven step. So this is top, bottom, top, bottom, yeah? So, and then this will be top, bottom. So top, bottom equals bottom, top, yeah? So this ratio, so this on this is equal to that on that. Yeah, I guess we wouldn't necessarily see a proof of Pythagoras theorem as being very punchline-ish at this at this point anyway. <laughs> okay, so there's three exercises. Three. Yeah. So. Oh, the squares are erected externally on the sides of a parallelogram. Centers and the vertices of a square. Yeah. I think these might be some nice exercises to try on our own later. Okay. okay. All right. Let's do four point three now. <laughs>